My name is the Primogen, and we are finally here. We finally made it. It's time to go full Vim. It's time for you to throw away that IDE. It's time for you to throw away Sublime. Use my free but annoying editor, Sublime, with a mediocre Vim plugin. <laughs> So let's do this, because you are now moving swift. You are entering and exiting insert mode like a gazelle. You are leaping horizontally, and you're dominating vertically. We've got all the movements in our little bat belt, all of them with all the little gears and switches. And uh, But now it's time to take that yellow belt and put on the rest of the bat outfit, because it's what kind of of analogy are you doing right now you should just stick to harry potter my friend all right enough with analogies then let's just let's just dive right in let's go full vim so going full vim will feel a little disorienting for a moment what you are used to is actually having like a nice file tree perhaps some menu options you're gonna have a bunch of shortcuts that you're already kind of familiar with you're also gonna have like a little console down low with all of your little output it's so nice and gentle and it just it just like you just get a rest nicely in your ide that's kind of all gone if you just type in vim and hit enter it's not going to give you any of that you might even you know your your standard response is probably going to look like ah! you your first thought is, well, how do I even open up a file? I know what to do when you get me in the file, coach, but I don't know how to actually get in the file. So if you don't have any plugins, the way you would get into the file is by using command mode E. So notice that I pressed colon E. You can see I'm in command mode. And now you can do a little fuzzy file find yourself. I would suggest first starting off with the folder you want to look in, a couple stars for the goodnesses, and then just start typing in the file you think it is. Once you get to this point, you can press tab, and it's probably gonna give you the correct one. And as you can see, I have two options, either the board jumps or systems render, jump point, or render. Hit enter on the one you want, and there you go, the file is open. Obviously, if you have a fuzzy finder, this would go a lot better. I can press control P to activate FCF and just start typing in J, U, already found it, hit enter. That's a little bit easier. I would strongly recommend getting some sort of Control P like plugin. I personally like FCF as it scales very well with a large project, not in matching speed, but in like intent speed. The problem with some of these other plugins is that even though you type in the same amount of letters, it just can't find the file, whereas FCF just seems to find it consistently. All right, so you have a file open and now you wanna start editing it. Well, you already know all the moves. You can hop down with your squirrely braces, your control Ds, your control Us, whatever, right? You now know what you're doing. Let's say we wanna open up a different file really quickly, right? Let's just open up that other jump file. All right, but I wanna go back. Well, I have a couple different options. You can continue to use control P by typing in jump and then hitting enter to go back, or you can swap between the last two files that you've had open by using control caret. Now, I personally really like this because often what I'll do is I'll have my main file that I'm opening, and then I'll control P to the file where I want to go, do the edit, jump back to my main file, and then just keep on doing that, kind of like hub and spoke model, right? I try never to hop like in a triangle, always just keeping that. To me, that feels very comfortable, but it's not. it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you have to jump between multiple files. When that happens, you have a few options on top of that. A, you can just always use Control-P to open up the file you want to go to. Not a bad habit, but you can be more efficient. The second method is using Control-O and Control-I. That will jump forward and backwards in your history. So depending on how many squirrely braces you've pressed, how many times you've jumped up to the top, all that will be in your history. So I can just walk backwards up my history by doing Control-O, or walk forwards in my history by doing control I. So you can imagine if you just did a little bit of editing in each one, you could hop around like that. The reason why I like this is that it's useful, especially in the help docs, but it can also be kind of annoying when you have to jump really far back, it becomes very inefficient and control P just totally wins. But there's a third option, marks. Now marks can be a little, hmm, I'm not quite sold on them, but I'm also not not sold on them, if you know what I'm trying to say. There are two types of marks. There's local file marks and global marks. Local marks. Local marks work within the file you're currently on. So if I just simply type in M 
and then say H, that will set a local mark at H. Now for me, how I do marks in general is I usually only have three up to four marks at any one time, and I keep them on my logical fingers. Most important, least important. So this is my primary file, secondary, tertiary, quaternary file. You get the idea. It's logical as opposed to mnemonic. A lot of people do mnemonics like, okay, this is the last X section. So I'm going to set this as X, right? That's tough because you have to remember your intent at each mark. I personally prefer just logical groupings of them. Most important to least important. So how does a mark work? Well, let's kind of navigate away. Say you're in a very large file and you have one spot you're working on and you have another couple things you're adding up top. You could have a mark way up here. So I'd go like this. I'd go M, T for me. T is the middle finger because I used Dvorak. So now if I wanted to jump to H, I'd just go quote H. i jump down to H. i do some work. I could go quote T, jump back up to my T mark. In file marks seem to be pretty cool if you're going to be in there for a while. I find them a little bit annoying to use if you're only in there for a second, right? It's just, it's a lot, it's set up for something you're going to use once, whereas perhaps just a simple find, you know, might be a little bit better way to jump to the thing you want. You kind of got to weigh it each for yourself. And also, is your memory good enough to even remember? Because soon you'll be like, wait, was it H? No. Was it K? No. Was it L? No. Oh, I didn't even set that one. Oh, darn it. I overrode it, right? Like, they can be a little bit tricky. Global marks. Much like local marks, they simply mark a spot, except for instead of being file specific, they're just, they're anything, right? So I can go M capital H. Now I have a mark in this position, line 52, and no matter what file I'm in, I can jump back by doing quote capital H. I will jump back. So if I had multiple files open, you could imagine this being quite convenient or you could hop between three or four files really quickly. But that's if you can kind of keep them all in your head in the position good enough. Or like I said with the local one, you might find yourself going, you know, Mark H. Oh, no, no, Mark Mark T. No, wait, wait, you know, Mark Third Finger. No, uh, uh, which one was it? Like, I find them to be both great and difficult to use at the exact same time. So come up with a strategy. Try them out. I would love to, if you think you have a better strategy than using logical placement, please let me know down below. That's enough on file movement. That should hopefully kind of set you into the right direction. There are other ways to open up and explore projects. You could, of course, use the native plugin that comes with it, NetRW, to walk around in the file tree and see what is available. But I find relying on a file tree can be a double-edged sword, right? It's really nice when you jump into a new project as you know nothing about it. You just want to see what's out there. But once you're in a project and you're slightly to moderately familiar with it, do you really need the tree anymore? Or is it much faster just to rely on Control-P to quickly jump in, open the file you want, and jump back out? This is the reason why I don't even have Nerd Tree anymore as a plugin. Even though it's a much more convenient tree plugin than NetRW, I just don't want to rely on them, right? So let's talk about splits. So splits are how I primarily use Vim. I don't use tabs. You can explore tabs if you want to explore them. I'm not going to go over them. I don't find them that useful. When I'm using Vim, I try to only have a single buffer open. I tend not to have splits open for very long because I can only really focus on one file at a time. So why have like four of them open just taking up real estate that I can't even look at anyways? So you can imagine a situation in which you have two windows. Maybe you have more than two windows, right? But it just keeps on getting larger and larger and larger, right? Eventually, it's not even useful, right? And then you can also have them go the other direction, right? You can have them be very, very horizontal. But in the end, is that even helpful? Does that help you at all? Mm, this is more like how I use Vim, so it's totally up to you. I normally just try to have one buffer open at a time. I can't do just, like, this just, uh, it's just too much. So a, just an awesome command is Control-W-O. That just closes everything but your current buffer. That just closes everything but your current buffer. My goodness, that is fantastic. So that way you can open up a couple, do a little copying and pasting, and boom, close them all down with just two keystrokes, right? Very nice. So how did I open all those new windows? Well, what I did was do Control W. That is like anything under Control W's window operations. So if I now press V, it's gonna open up a vertical split. If I do Control W, 
S, it's going to open up a horizontal split. Yes, S for horizontal. Mm, it just happens sometimes. You can resize your splits by simply doing a resize and then the amount of rows you want displayed. Or you can do vertical resize and the amount of columns you want displayed. If you want everything just to go back to evenly spread, do control W equals. So let's put all those together. So let's say I wanted to open up my file tree. I would go control W, V, vertical split, EX, open that up, and then a quick vertical resize to get it to where I want, right? And that is why I have that remap for when I need to open up the file tree, I do exactly that. I do control W, V, open up the file tree and resize it so that it's nice and small. There's ways you can manipulate and work with your buffers if you need multiple on your screen. First off, you can just, you can swap them out. So you can do control W, R, and that will just simply rotate your current buffers. You can do control W, shift H to go from a vertical split to a horizontal split. But honestly, once again, I rarely use these. And if anything, I will open up the help menu, do a little bit of looking up here, and then of course, quickly just close it back down going into full view. This is obviously a personal preference here, but having a single buffer open just seems to work the best for me. And I think it's a good thing to get used to while using Vim. It'll really help you focus on just being able to jump in and out and not having to keep all these other screens open that you can't even focus or look on, but just simply having all the real estate you need for a single view. So there we go. This should get you to the point of being able to use Vim. I find this to be the hardest part about Vim when I was learning, which is actually using the windows and the splits and all that and being able to close and open and just have the view the way I want it to be. When I first started, of course, I used to have like 15 splits open and I'd use control W equal to get that and then resize one of them. And eventually I landed on a place where I only ever like to keep one open at a time and just be really fast switching in between views. Find your own method, find what makes you happy. Let me know down below what you think is the best way to have things organized because I'd like to hear it and I'll even try it out to see if perhaps yours is superior. I don't know. But thank you so much for watching. My name is The Primogen. And I think you might have just gone full of him.